But speaking of Wemby, as we are kind of maneuvering our way past whatever, I want to bring it up because if you haven't heard, haven't listened to any episodes, Big Chet Holmgren guy, number one in the rookie of the year odds has switched hands. Mm -hmm. Chet Holmgren, who's been playing out of his noggin, just been cooking with the most sauciest of sauces, has and been- I'd say a big factor in this too. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. I was just going to say the big factor in this too is the wins. I, I feel like the Spurs just being terrible and the Thunder being one of the best teams in the league so far. But I think that that's part of it, but also the fact that like Chet has been, I'm gonna, the second best player on the Thunder and they're winning games. With how well he's playing, he is like there. He's maximizing his role for sure. Yes, he's doing almost nothing wrong in the role he's being given, yeah. which I think is he's important. Completely maximizing it. That's why, I mean, his true shooting is like 69%. It's like what Jokic was at last year. And he's actually like shooting some threes and stuff. He's not just a rim runner. He has some variety to his shot selection, more so than just like a Mitchell Robinson. But up a 70% true shooting season. But yeah, Chet Holmgren though, you think he would have won rookie of the year last year? Yes. You do? If he's, who, if, who knows if he has the same type of season, but. That's why I, like, I would rather be like a comeback player of the year award for those type of guys and that you just don't get a rookie of the year. Cause I mm -hmm. think the value of sitting and watching and being in the NBA environment for a year, like almost makes it not fair. Yeah. Like almost we're like Jonathan Mitchell should have got 1.5 multiplier on his rookie of the year votes. Cause that's the last it was time it's. Close. It, it was really close, but between the two of them, just if you don't look at the year factor. I also just like hate on Ben Simmons because he was a sixer, whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'll own it. I know why I was on the Mitchell train and I'm on the opposite side of it now, I guess, because I want Chet to win. But I just, NFL, I'm almost positive. Rookie of the year is, you get injured, doesn't matter. It is rookie year. Just because That's of how it works then? In, in the NFL. The NFL? I believe oh, I had so. no idea. Hmm. I believe you. I, no, I also, yeah, I, I feel like that. I looked this up to make sure I wasn't crazy. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I think I looked it up during the Ben Simmons era. Because we're doing, were we doing Next Man Up podcast? when that happened? In what? When what happened? The Ben Simmons, Donovan Mitchell thing. No, that was like a couple of years at least before we ever did a podcast. Or is that when I did mine? I think it was before both. We were freshmen in college when that season happened. Donovan Mitchell's rookie year. Then we must have just talked about it somewhere for like just a long time. Because well, I, I mean, yeah, we took, we always talked about NBA before we started a podcast. That's why <laughs> it kind of works very no, naturally. I, that, I just remember it being like a very long, like a, I felt like it was like a multiple occurrences for like a long long, long time type of event. I don't remember actually ever talking about it with you. But then maybe honestly. I, I don't know, maybe I just- We probably, we probably did. But we probably, I, maybe we just texted and that's why it felt like it was so yeah. long. It was very covered by the media. I feel like it was a big thing that I would see stuff about every day. Like, cause they were both getting into it, like wearing shirts, oh, like yeah. calling out the other person. Yeah. Like that. Like Donald Mitchell wore a rookie. shirt that had the dictionary definite. What? Did, it, did it say like not a rookie or something like that? Yeah, Donovan Mitchell was wearing a shirt that had the dictionary definition of the word rookie. That's all it said. <laughs> oh um, yeah. An athlete playing his or her first season as a member of a professional sports team. Yeah, which is technically like- what, I, like I want to say the NBA is the only one that does this weird even if you get injured, it's fine. Really? But like, what, based on that definition, I, I just don't get why he thought he was making a, such a big point there because there, there's still that- As a definition member usually, of a professional sports team. Playing his first season as a member. I guess, yeah. I still feel like it's backwards. I just think that the whole reason that this came up, I feel like that year of just sitting and being in the environment is huge. Yeah, like, I agree. I agree I, with you. It makes sense either way to me, but like you just have to make it a rule either way. Like Yes, because like let's say Wemby sat a year and had a year to like not bulk up, but like get his body ready. For, it's already ready for the NBA, but like that's what Chet did for his year. Once he got healthy, he like bulked up. He put on <laughs> weight and is now like lanky doesn't even feel like it's going to be a problem. Like that's not what's going to cut his career short. Like like you thought after his like injury happened. I mean like being skinny? Yes, yeah, I mean. like being too skinny and just getting like bullied. He bullies people. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big you are. That's not true. There's like Joel and Beads that I'm sure would bully him, but he yeah, like- I mean, he, it's still gonna happen now. Yeah. Yeah, he just put on a bunch, yeah. like what, 15 pounds, something like that? That's what he said, I'm pretty sure, 15 pounds. That's a lot of muscle to put on. Yeah, I mean, he is 7'1", but still, that is quite a bit. Yeah. Chet though, like just to go into like his game a little bit, he's what like- he's been doing. A little bit smaller than Wimbyama, but he's similar build, very similar actually. He's been shooting well. Like he's a really good rim protector has really good defensive instincts. One thing I really like about him is like his motor um, and his willingness to play the role that he's in, which is just like awesome to see a young guy just, just buying in. Somebody who's like a very highly touted prospect, you know, debatable number one pick. Should have been. You think should have been over Paolo? Oh yeah, I forget about that little wrinkle. They were in the same class. I forget who, about Who it. did you think it was going against? Oh, the against? guy that went one. Or no, wait, did he check go Paolo three? Went one. Chet went two. Jabari, I thought, for some reason, I thought Jabari Smith Jr. went higher than he did. Well, he was supposed to go like the odds and 
most sources were saying Jabari Smith was going one all the way up until the day of the draft. And then it moved. And then it flipped. The whole time, everybody was saying Chet was, was going three. two to Oklahoma City. Yeah, Paolo was three to Houston. Because Jabari was going one. To Orlando. Because like, oh. uh, Scott, you forgot his name last time. I forgot his name this time. Sam. Sam Presti. There we go. Oh. Um, <laughs> Remember a few episodes ago? Yeah. Yes. Anyways, Sam Presti was pretty vocal about like the whole time that if we had the number one pick, we'd be taking Chet. We just have the because of two what pick, we so. have. We have. Yeah. Like, and of, because I think that's where he would rank him just in a vacuum of all those players. Oh, like, hmm. you know. That's interesting. Well, if you say who's a better player, Chet or like, Hello. I feel like you're not crazy either way. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. That's what I was asking so, about if he would won rookie of the year last year. I can, I'm just taking like with what he's done in this small sample size. I feel like what he's doing and maybe it's because he's buying into the role that I'm more even more yeah, like exactly just like, it's like all what we in. saw Paolo doing what we saw Paolo doing for Team USA was, was like kind of it was like eerily similar honestly just maximizing the role he was playing really well Think like if we how, saw Paolo playing on a team where he was like down in the pecking order you know and just had a role yeah. to play instead of he has the keys to it all you know Think how disgusting the Rockets would be though if they took Paolo instead of Jabari Smith Jr. this year if they would have gotten if, Paolo, it, yeah, like if, if they, he would have fallen to them like, that would have been think how, pretty no, insane this year think how disgusting that team would be but who knows maybe maybe their development just completely flips because like a big part of I feel like why Jabari struggled last year was because of the guard play on the Rockets was That's like fair. horrible and, and would, could not get him the ball. Because he uh, does look better this year than he did last year. Yeah, for sure. He definitely does with more of like a veteran presence there with Fred Van Vliet as uh, more of the primary ball handler. And as much as I don't want to say it, I feel like Dylan Brooks has Dylan given Brooks. that team like a little bit of a moxie. Yeah, and I hate it so much, but I feel yeah. like he's- He's such a Udoka guy. <laughs> Dylan Brooks is like perfect for email, you know. the nose.